Okay, so I am working on compositing this kind of sock texture on and using it in different ways. And now I'm using the eraser tool, which I haven't used before because I composited some in and now I'm just softening its edges and de deciding where and, and where I want it, where I don't want it. And I can keep doing that in a variety of ways, right? But the beauty of the compositing is you see how it, it starts to break up. Like this is starting to look like the finished digital painting texture I might want, where it's, it has a lot more variety than just my brushwork alone. Even just these little kind of scribbles from the composite, they really start to break it up, which is nice. And so, we're looking for that either with doing a lot of brushwork or with compositing on top or with layering. These are all good things. Let me see. So now I'm going to merge these two together. So you can see the difference these layers make, right? And I'm going to keep working on this direct painting of these socks. And maybe I'll take the opacity down a little bit again. But keep my, my brush pretty sharp. And then never, um, always letting that texture come through a little bit. But I can downplay it. Definitely want to insert the highlights back into the face, but leaving room for, for weird accidents to happen. I still haven't put the glasses on. I'm not sure I really want to. We will see. It's like the socks took off his glasses. That might be reasonable. And everything should be touched, you know, with your own brush at different points. And by compositing something in and then painting over it, this is rotoscoping. You're converting it into your own paint. We don't do that with likeness because then we're infringing on the copyright of whoever took that photo. But with textures, especially when we modify them for ourselves, yeah, feel free. Get there however you need to get there. Let's see. Now, what I like about this Takashi Murakami is that it gives me a lot of these really interesting internal variations on color. And this is a lot more specific. Like look at all the tiny little detailed shapes that are there. And so this is a kind of painting with a smaller brush or a lighter touch. I just kind of call it noodling. I'm just kind of squirming around. Not making huge shape differences, but bringing a little bit more finish to everything by noodling across it. But still not trying to zoom in and draw everything just as it is. And digital painting does not need to mean it looks like a photograph. It can just be playful in your own version of things. It can be chunky and silly. 
It should reflect the taste you have in art generally. Take this down a little bit more. So I get a little bit more subtlety in these colors. Now I need to bring back his hair a little bit. And for that, I might go to a higher opacity. And remember, you do have to very often, and this is true in almost all types of painting, you have to often reassert your highlights and reassert your shadows especially as they get covered up by texture and other stuff. So I want to find, you know, his hairline here and have it kind of poke through, get some of the shadows behind it. Maybe soften some of those shadows. You can also use the space bar. It's a handy uh, shortcut just to move around when you're zoomed in. I know we learned that before, but it's something we haven't had to use in a while. And most painting that's stylized uses a little bit of every color almost everywhere. So this is very full spectrum. It's not duotone. It's not flat color, it's not local color, where things are the color they really look like. Like, look at all the colors in his skin tone. This is full spectrum. You use every color everywhere, but in different proportions for different reasons. It's going to make your painting strong. Oh, what happened? That scared me. So I'm going to save my work. Okay, I'm going to go back to 100%. Or maybe 90%. Try to get that hat reasserted. And poking through all these little wormy socks. And then his hair on this side. And you can experiment with your textures by using different brushes as well. I just tend to like to work with one brush that I've designed and then just adapt as much as possible to it. Again, just noodling around, Getting a little bit more color everywhere.
Because we want to put in that little button of his. A little focal point to this bottom area, which is pretty, pretty dull. All right. Let's think what else it needs. So I think I'm going to try to do the glasses. I want to kind of be aware of what the focal points are of it. Strengthen those. I think I might go to my other reference of him. Just to get those glasses. And I actually wonder if I should just kind of composite them in and then paint over them. Kind of like I did with the socks. Oh, one thing I don't have are his eyebrows, which are barely there, but I think are worth putting in. So let me do that. These noodly little highlights, shadow shapes. And sometimes I'll take just a really big brush at a really low opacity and do kind of glazing. So if I want this to be just a little bit warmer, I'll take this kind of pink and just glaze over it. 